Hello, everyone. Today, me and my team will be talking about the cross-selling and upselling recommendation system. Firstly, we would like to cover some basic terminologies for this project. We will start with cross-selling. It is a practice of offering additional products or services to existing customers based on their previous purchases or preferences. Upsell is the strategy of encouraging customers to purchase a more expensive version of a product or to add few premium features. Support score is a metric that measures how frequently items appear together in transactions, indicating their relationship strength. Conference score is a measure of the likelihood that a product will be purchased, given that the product of another often used in association with rules and market basket analysis. Lift score is a metric that evaluates how much more likely two items are to be brought together that would be expected by chance, indicating the strength of an association. Moving on to the FP growth algorithm. The FP growth is a highly efficient algorithm for mining frequent item sets in large data sets designed to overcome the limitations of traditional methods like a priori. What makes FP growth stand out is its tree based structure and the candidate free approach. So here are some of the key features that makes FP growth unique. The first one being efficient handling of large data sets. It eliminates the need for generating candidate item sets, which is a significant bottleneck in algorithms like a priori. Instead, it uses compact data structure called the FP tree, which efficiently stores item sets and the frequency information. It also has a tree based representation. It's a highly compressed structure that retains the essential information for mining frequent item sets. This tree is created by scanning the data set only twice, reducing the computational cost. The next one being Unlike a priori, which repeatedly generates candidate item sets and tests their frequency, FP growth directly mines frequent item sets from the FP tree. This eliminates the expensive step of candidate generation and significantly improves efficiency. The FP growth also follows a divide and conquer approach by recursively mining smaller conditional databases based on the FP tree. This allows it to focus on frequent patterns, which reduces the search space and speeds up computation. And the FP tree also has a better memory usage as compared to other types of algorithms in terms of storing large sets of candidate item sets, which makes this algorithm all the more memory efficient when dealing with large transactional databases. My name is Vivek and I would like to pass this on to Pranav. Okay, so I'll be explaining about the data flow uh, in our particular system because we are using Amazon uh, AWS as well as W along with our uh, Jupyter Notebook. So we are basically first uh, taking the data from Kegel, uh, following which we are doing a few pre-processing step using Jupyter Notebook and pushing the data to our uh, Amazon Relational Database. In our case, we were using a Postgres SQL server. Once the data, pre-processed data is loaded to the Postgres, uh, Postgres uh, SQL server, we are uh, fetching the data uh, for our EDA. Once the EDA is done, we're just uh, doing a model. We are building our models and uh, we are taking the output and pushing the data back to the Amazon uh, relational database services for the storage. Once this, uh, the data is stored all uh, for all the different models, we are uh, basically just uh, visualizing the data on Tableau. We are doing uh, different analysis and making the reports more interactive for uh, the users. We have also included uh, these charts and graphs on uh, the web page, which we have created, making that interactive as well. So coming to the a priori model, the a priori model is a popular algorithm which is used in associate uh, rule mining to uncover patterns and relational uh, relationships in transactional data. It basically identifies the item sets uh, that uh, occur more frequ most frequently and generates rules that describes the likelihood of uh, co-occurrences. So there are a few key concepts which we need to understand about a priori uh, model, which are the frequent item sets, basically just uh, the frequency of uh, the items occurring. That is the most simplified version of what frequent item sets is. Uh, and the second one is the association rules. These uh, rules are built by the a priori algorithm and it's basically just saying uh, it's similar to an if-else condition. So if product uh, A is what is occurring more frequently, then product B would be a proper suggestion for product A. So as shown in the picture, we can know that uh, how these uh, model particularly 
plays out. So we are getting the transactional data. We are applying the a priori algorithm. We are getting uh, frequent item sets in this transactional data. And uh, based upon the most frequent item sets, we are ge generating the rules. So going to the next one, the a priori cross uh, cell algorithm, this is the algorithm that uh, I worked on. So a priori cross cell algorithm uses the association rule mining uh, to identify the product co combinations frequently purchased together. So it wor the working of this particular model is in the format uh, as shown as uh, here, where we are collecting the transactional data following which we are applying the a priori algorithm to identify the frequent uh, product combinations. We are generating the three different scores in our case, which is support score, combination, and lift, all of which can be manually, the thresholds for these three support scores can be set uh, by us. And in our case, we have done that. Uh, we are using the lift, the high lift uh, rules to suggest the cross sell items. So the threshold for high lift is generally set by us. And, uh, whichever has the higher values than our threshold, only those we are selecting and then uh, we are pushing it to our database. So the key features of the a priori cross-sell algorithms are uh, that it has very interpretable rules compared to some other algorithms. Uh, in the sense, it's more easily understandable. Uh, it has customizable th thresholds. Uh, so as I mentioned before, we can set the support, confidence, and lift, all three for uh, uh, our algorithm, which helps us uh, define the results more accurately. And it's also more scalable and versatile uh, as it works across uh, domains like retail, healthcare, and finance. Uh, it has more sparse uh, data handling as it performs well, even with uh, limited item transactions. Uh, a priori, even though it is a simple algorithm, it is slower and more memory intensive compared to other algorithms. My name is Pranav and uh, next I'll be hand handing over to Anto. He'll take care of the a priori upsell model. Thanks Pranav. Uh, so I'm going to explain about the a priori upsell model and the process involved. Our project uses the a priori upsell model to recommend uh, higher value products to customers, enhancing both the customer experience and uh, retail profits. Uh, the process starts with the data preparation, uh, where we clean and uh, pre-process transaction data and convert it into a transactional format. Uh, the a priori algorithm identifies uh, frequent item sets and generates association rules based on metrics like support, conference, and lift. From these rules, uh, we focus on recommendation where the consequent product is a premium alternative, enabling uh, precise and effective upselling. We implemented this model uh, using Python, leveraging Pandas, NumPy, and ML Extent, uh, while fine tuning parameters like uh, support and conference for optimum results. Next slide, please. So, technically, uh, the model extracts frequent item sets and generates rules linking products in customer's cart to a premium alternative. Metrics like support validate the patterns, conference ensures the reliability, and lift measures the upsells impact. Compared to models like FP Growth and Eclat, a priori stands out for its transparency and interpretability. Uh, this approach drives revenue growth by recommending high margin products and provides actionable insights for retail strategies. It also improves the customer experience uh, by offering tailored recommendations. For example, uh, from our results, you can see the customer in France who purchased a pack of six skull paper cups were recommended to purchase a pack of six skull uh, paper plates with a conference of 71% and lift of 14.29%. These metrics highlight how the model identifies valuable upsell and that prevents both the customer and satisfaction and revenue growth as well. Up next, uh, Swati will take you through the following slides on Eclat model. Thanks. Hi, uh, I'm Swati. So like uh, the third model that we've implemented in this project is Eclat model. It is short for equivalence class clustering and bottom up lattice traversal. So this Eclat algorithm is like a frequent item set mining technique that is used in machine learning and data mining to discover patterns in transactional data sets. It is particularly useful for market basket analysis where you want to find associations between items frequently bought together. So the three main steps in Eclat is First, we convert the data set into a vertical format. So each item will be associated with a list of transaction IDs. 
Next, what we need to do is we generate the frequent item sets by intersecting the transaction ID lists. Finally, then we prune the item sets that do not meet the minimum support threshold that is set by us. So this method is particularly effective because it reduces the problem size at each step. Um, can you move to the next slide, please? Okay, so frequent item sets will then help us to identify patterns of items that are often purchased together. So these patterns can be used to recommend additional items to the customers. For example, if we know that items A and B are frequently bought together, we can recommend B to customers who have purchased A. So ECLAT relies only on support to determine which item sets are frequent. That is what makes it different from, that is one point that makes it different from the other two algorithms that have been specified. So support is basically the proportion of transactions in which an item set appears. Um, in ECLAT, this metric is preferred over confidence in Lyft because it will ensure that our recommendations are based on common purchasing patterns, making them more reliable and widely applicable. So uh, to implement our cross-sell recommendations, we start by using ECLAT to find the frequent item sets in our transaction data. Next, we generate association rules from these item sets. Finally, we use these rules to recommend products to our customers. So to conclude, basically, ECLAT is very efficient and scalable, making it suitable for large data sets. It is also easy to interpret and implement, providing actionable insights that can enhance our marketing strategies and uh, boost sales through uh, effective cross-selling. Um, next, uh, Atreya will be talking about how we use ECLAT uh, model for upsell recommendations. Thank you, Swati. Uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, frequent item sets uh, help identify patterns in customer purchasing behavior, which can be leveraged for upselling. These patterns uh, reveal opportunities to suggest higher values or upgraded versions of items that customers are already considering. For instance, if an item co combination like A and B uh, occurs frequently, uh, B is going to be the premium version of A. It provides a basis to recommend B to customers who purchase A. Association rules are then generated uh, from these item sets to suggest these upgrades or premium alternatives based on what customers typically buy. These recommendations are driven by customer behavior, uh, helping to steer uh, customers towards more expensive or upgraded version of the products they've already interested in. The concept of support, which measures the frequency of an item set uh, appearance across transactions, ensures that the recommendations are based on widely observed purchasing patterns, making them both reliable and relevant to a larger group of customers. Uh, could you move to the next slide, please? So each of the three algorithms that we have discussed uh, today uh, brings a unique approach to gener generating uh, recommendations uh, optimized for different scenarios. One method em uh, employs a tree structures to mine frequent item sets efficiently, uh, significantly spreading up the process. Another approach uh, uses a vertical data format, which allows for more memory efficient processing, making it well suited for large data sets. The third method uh, adopts an iterative process which systematically filters out non-frequent item sets, offering scalability and efficiency, especially with vast amounts of data. These uh, distinct methods each offer uh, specific advantages, ensuring flexibility in the recommendation generation process based on the data size and computational resources available. Thank you.